Welcome to this edition of Bringing Home the Gold as we talk with the state champion Minster Wildcat football team on Mark Hoots, joined by head coach Garen Stokes, Sam Dews, and Eli Wolf. And coach, we'll start with you. Has it sunk in yet? 2014 Division VI state champions, the Minster Wildcats. Yeah, it, pretty cool getting these guys up here and, and just being around them. We had equipment turn in yesterday. Uh, you, know, you, you have a special group like that and you get to spend a ton of time with them. Then you got to break up at the end of the year. Uh, no better way to break up being maximized your season uh, as a state champs and getting all your practices in. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's been pretty cool. Just sad to see it all end. Sam, Friday afternoon you guys win the state title. What was the weekend like for the Minster Wildcats? Uh, it was really exciting. Uh, it was didn't really set in until about Sunday or Sunday night after it was all over. And the, I think the best part was the probably the fire truck ride. That really helped set it in. And, of course, Eli, first of three state titles for the MAC. I'm going to throw in LaSalle in the MAC since Nate Moore is the head coach down at LaSalle. So four state titles for the MAC. What was your weekend like coming home as you had the game-winning touchdown in that dramatic victory over Kirtland? Um, yeah, like Sam said, it was really exciting, you know, just being with family and ha I mean, having everybody just, you know, praising and stuff like that. But even more, just being with the team and all the time you spent together, just to, to have it pay off like that it was just unbelievable. Coach, after the game, one of the things you said was, we weren't supposed to be here. You guys lost three games this year. You lost to, to St. Henry midseason to put you at 5-3. and three. What was it about this team that got you to that point? Overtime, first round of the playoffs, a lot of people doubting you, a lot of people doubting if you could beat Kirtland. But when the clocks hit triple zero, you guys were ahead. Yeah, just a crazy way uh, of how our group continued to improve throughout the year. Uh, just made plays and caught fire at the right time. Uh, we caught some breaks at the right time. But we had some big time holes early on in the year that where kids just forced themselves to get better and our seniors did a great job leading to, to hold people accountable uh, and, and our holes became solid football players and uh, we, we felt like we were pretty solid across the board towards the end of the year and uh, caught some breaks and made some plays and next thing you know we're the state champs it's pretty crazy. Sam when you look back on the season what was the key game what was the key sequence for this year for the way this team came together was there a key game or was it just just kind of how things just rolled on throughout this run? Uh, I think the key game was against Mechanicsburg when we beat them and we realized we have a chance to keep going and we can battle through tough situations and still get the win. Eli, you look back at that Mechanicsburg game, first half they dominated it, kept you guys away from getting the ball. You couldn't, they just held on to the ball. They had long sustained drives so that that dynamic Mr. Offense was on the sideline. How frustrating was that first half against Mechanicsburg when you guys just couldn't get the ball? You know, it was really frustrating because uh, that's something that hasn't really happened to us yet, I mean, in that year. So, well, I mean, when they were just holding on and, you know, getting five yards at a time, uh, I mean, it was really frustrating. But, to you know, to come out and just make plays when we needed them, I mean, it was huge. And that game really propelled us in the playoffs. So. Coach, certainly Eli, part of that skill position group that you had that was the reason why a lot of folks thought Minster was going to be talented this year and those skill position guys were there all, all the way but I think if I remember correctly you really th were impressed with the way your offensive line came together this year. Yeah our skill was awesome especially Friday when it mattered uh, but that group uh, that's, a, that's a group where we had some big time holes and those guys decided back early August that hey, we're not a very good unit and we got to spend some extra time and those guys came in every morning before school uh, to watch tape of practice or watch tape of opponents or watch you know game tape and uh, really 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 forced themselves to get better which out of any group uh, they just they, they, they came together. I mean we had we had 16 kids in the morning every day uh, and, and it's nice to see when you do that kids kids learn the valuable lesson of you know you get out of what you put into it and they were they were good towards the end of the year they were, they were really especially Friday we protected one really well and um, and ran the ball when we needed to run the ball. So just a, a really special group of offensive linemen that, that forced themselves to improve. Sam, a lot of times coaches come up with different motivational techniques. There's one thing you guys did after every single practice, 25 push-ups. Tell us about why you guys did that. Uh, we did it because we haven't won a state title since, since 1989, which was 
25 years and it really pushed us after like because you don't want to do that like ever again <laughs> and after every practice you wouldn't want to do it the next day so it just pushes you to wanting to get better and to stop the underclassmen from having to do that especially coach that worked out so well what do you have in store next year i don't know we were planning on doing 26. <laughs> uh, we, we didn't think we had a shot this year and um I just what a big time compliment to 51 kids that, that did things the right way. Eli, before we let you go, I got to ask you about this. You broke your older brother Ethan's touchdown record this year. We got some more bragging rights over him now with the state title. What, what's it? What was it like around the the Wolf uh, household this weekend? Uh, you know, he's he's always the first one to be proud of me anytime I do something. But uh, yeah, over text message we have our little shots at each other. You know, and him always saying, you, know, you never had that one hand to catch, but he, he's always pretty happy for me. So it's 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 good. Now you've got the gold trophy that he never brought home. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let him know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, when you, when you look back to the, this season, I remember we talked back in August during the warm-up about your max schedule. You started off against Marin Local and Coldwater, the defending state champions, still the defending state champions. You go through that type of a grind of a season, to start off the year 2-2, two and two, get smacked right in the face to start off the max schedule with those two teams. Did you see that pay off down the road? Oh, we thought that was a huge benefit. A huge benefit because those guys are well coached and, and they have really good players and they expose everything you don't do well and we felt like that happening early uh, forced us to correct some things faster and uh, that, that was big for us we, and, and we got out of those games healthy which was, which was really important and um, credit these seniors though for, for I mean every coach has high standards every coach has high expectations uh, and sometimes kids choose not to get to that level and these kids chose to to come to that level which was was pretty important 25 years ago minster won the state title at ohio stadium this year the state championships back at the shoe and once again they brought home the gold trophy we're going to take a break here and bring home the gold when we come back we'll talk with some more of the minster players here on wsa Welcome back to Bringing Home of the Gold. Joined now by Hayden Schindler, Caleb Broering, and Jack Joe Traska. I like to call him Jack because <laughs> I just made up that nickname for him. But he's on the end for us. And Joe, we'll start with you. Tenora, the state semifinal game. Special teams came up so big for you guys in that win over Tenora. Was that one of those games where you point at and saying, this is a game where once we won this game, we, we knew this was going to be a special year? Well, I think at that point, I mean, we were – Getting to the state semis, you already know it's a special year. But we'd stressed uh, special teams the whole season. We knew we were going to get beat on the offensive side of the ball sometimes, on the defensive side of the ball sometimes. But we could win special teams. So we put a lot of effort into that. Caleb, what's it been like around Minster the last couple of weeks? The tragedy with Austin Brackman passing away right, before, right after that state semifinal victory. The emotions all over the place. And now a state championship. I know I, I talked with Coach Lee before the game, and he, he said to me, we, we hope we can start getting back to normal pretty soon. Has things gotten back to normal around Minster? No, I still don't think it's been back to normal. I mean, we're still on a hype from winning state championship, but it was a, it's been a roller coaster with Austin and everything. And then right after we won state, I think everybody, not they didn't forget about it, but it, it kind of lightened the mood a little bit, and everybody's happier now. Hayden, in that state championship game, you came up with a big play defensively. Second quarter, I want to say, fumbled deep in the Kirtland territory. You recovered that fumble, led to the Minster lead, and all of a sudden, after trailing for most of that first quarter, you guys kind of took control there. Yeah, uh, I'm actually a little disappointed about that fumble recovery, to be honest. Could have been my first uh, you touchdown. You were trying to scoop and score. I was trying to scoop and score. <laughs> uh, it was uh, pretty wet out, though, but I'm just glad I got, got the ball in, in and uh, it was a good step during that game. Speaking of the rain, how difficult was it to play in those conditions? Uh, actually, it really I didn't really even notice it, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I thought it was going to be a lot worse coming into the game than what it really was. So, 
Caleb, what was it like for you to play at Ohio Stadium? Oh, it was awesome. Just walking out there the first time, it, it was awesome. Walking out into the middle of the O, and it, it's, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, when you look back at this year, what sticks out to you? Uh, all the work we put in and the relationships I've formed with my teammates, um, that, I mean, in the trophy's sweet, but in the years later in my life, that'll like, end up mattering more than a state title. Now, are you guys going to be able to take the trophy home for a day or two and be able to spend special time with it? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> trophy case isn't locked at school. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we have any leads on any type of trophy disappearances. We're going to take a break here and bring home the gold, and we come back more from Mr. Wildcats here on WOSN. Welcome back to Bringing Home the Gold. I'm Mark Koontz, joined now by J.R. Nixon, Logan Pack, and Chase Castle. And J.R., we'll start with you. You're on that offensive line. We heard Coach Stokes talk about how much that offensive line came together. Was there a specific moment when that line came together? Or was it just kind of a, an evolution throughout the season of you guys forming a, a really a cohesive group up there? Um, I definitely think it was the evolution. Uh, we came in three days a week for an hour before school, like Coach said, and this began at the beginning of the season, and we just came together as a group. We got better each week. We took what we f saw in film, and we applied it to practice, and it helped us in the long run, helped us achieve our goals. Logan, just a, a fantastic state championship game, one of really some really great state championship games. In the middle of that game, when you're on the field, when you're on the sideline, did, did you guys realize how good that game was, how much it was back and forth, or are you just so locked in at the moment that you didn't even realize what a, a fantastic contest that was? Uh, I just was playing football. I mean, I didn't really care how it was going to end. I just wanted to keep playing. I knew they were a great team, but we ended up on top. But just thinking about it, I really didn't think about back and forth. We just had to keep fighting. Chase, 15, 20 years from now, what are you going to take away from this season? The, all the work that we put in is real big. Um, just all the days, the film in the morning, or we, we, we went to Bluffton and had that bunch of practices there to get better. But I mean, all the, all the memories are gonna come from all the practices, all the hard work we put in. A lot of hard work, but it seems like you guys also know how to have a good time. Coach kind of keeps it light, but able to get the, the job done. What's this coaching staff like for you guys? They're uh, pretty tough, usually they, they really push us in the weight room to get us better. Um, really looking forward to see the young guys step up next year and see how they're going to do. Logan, if we went back to week five, you guys are two and two, you're playing Versailles. Did you think, did you have faith in this team that a playoff run, a deep playoff run, a state championship was going to happen? I wanted to get into the playoffs first. I mean, I wasn't thinking about state championship. I was thinking just get win, just keep winning, just keep winning, and hopefully get into the playoffs and then after that, get deep into the playoffs. Finally, JR, what is your best memory from this season? Best memory would definitely be holding, hoisting that championship trophy up very end, having uh, Snodgrass announce our name. It's definitely very special. The Minster Wildcats, not the incorrect name that slipped in there during <laughs> that trophy celebration, as the Minster Wildcats took home their second state football title. They've won many titles in a lot of other sports, but now two in football. And that's going to wrap it up for us tonight on Bringing Home the Gold. I want to thank all of our guests from the Mr. Wildcats as we congratulate them on their state championship. We'll see you next time on WLA.